Hi, I'm Sophia. And I'm Cassie. We're both health educators with the Tobacco Prevention Program at the Lincoln and Lancaster County Health Department. Our job is to educate people about the dangers of tobacco use and exposure. We often think of the health effects of cigarettes, e-cigarettes, and maybe even secondhand smoke. However, even though we don't talk about it as much, tobacco use has a strong effect on the environment. Definitely. I know we've all seen the litter from cigarettes or cigarette butts, but did you realize that they are the most littered item in the world? That doesn't even account for the cigarette lighters, the cigar tips, or the packaging from these tobacco and electronic cigarette products. Something as small as a cigarette butt can have a huge impact. Even though cigarette butts are technically biodegradable, even in the most perfect conditions, it can take at least nine months for these items to degrade. Meanwhile, during that time, the chemicals like nicotine and metals from these cigarette butts are leaching into the soil. Rain can wash these chemicals deeper into the ground, then affecting our groundwater, ultimately affecting waterways, plants, and animals. E-cigarettes are bad for the environment too. Many of these popular devices have disposable pods or even the entire device is disposable. These plastic devices also contain nicotine, batteries, and other chemicals that can also pollute the ground. And what can we do about that? Of course, the best way to reduce tobacco litter is to quit using tobacco products. If you or someone you know are interested in quitting, the Nebraska Tobacco Quit Line is here to help. Just call 1-800-QUIT-NOW to get started. Another way to reduce tobacco litter is by not allowing smoking in public places, including public parks. The City of Lincoln has a tobacco-free parks policy, which includes electronic cigarettes. We mentioned earlier that we often talk to people about the effects of secondhand smoke, but the health effects actually begin with air contamination. Secondhand smoke contains seven th over 7,000 chemicals, most of which are toxic, and over 70 that are known to cause cancer. Not only are humans exposed to this air pollution, but it also affects, like we said before, our plants and our animals. This is a huge problem in multi-unit rental housing. Ventilation between the apartments is not always separate, so drifting secondhand smoke is often an issue in housing that does not have smoke-free and tobacco-free policies. Smoking is one of the leading causes of residential fires too. Actually, that's another great way to help. You can choose to not allow smoking in your own house or business, or you can support ap apartments, other multi-unit housing options, and businesses that have tobacco-free policies. If you want more information about tobacco-free and smoke-free policies, we're here to help. Just contact us at the Lincoln and Lancaster County Health Department or by visiting tobaccofreelancastercounty.org. Hello, I'm Melissa Fuller with Shape of the City. Today we are going to learn about the Nebraska Commission for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing. Sharon here is going to help a little bit with some of the sign, but she's going to step off camera and we're going to be talking to Kim and Cody to learn more about some of the services they have across the state. Thank you, Sharon. You're welcome. All right. Hi, Kim. Hi, Cody. Hello. Right. Hello. Hi, Melissa. <laughs> All right, Kim, if you can explain what is the commission, Nebraska Commission for the Heart uh, deaf and hard of hearing. Sure. So we are a state agency and we provide services for those people who are deaf, deaf blind and hard of hearing and also for people who are service providers who serve that population. Our mission is we promote and advocate, advocate for Nebraskans who are deaf, deaf blind and hard of hearing and we ensure, we make sure that they receive equal opportunities in a variety of aspects, like with socialization, with their legal rights, uh, education, and also for employment. So those are just some examples. We also make sure that the group of deaf, deaf, blind, and hard of hearing have access to effective communication. And that's from people in government and private sectors as well. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the services that you do provide? Well, we have several different programs that are very popular in our agency. For example, we have something that's called the Nebraska Telecommunications Equipment Program. Uh, it allows people to be familiar when a phone is ringing and a signaler device, which I'll show those devices shortly. We also have a hearing aid bank program where there are refurbished 
refurbished hearing aids for people who cannot afford hearing aids based on income. So they can get a free hearing aid if they qualify. Those hearing aids are donated by people and we're always looking for any hearing aids that would be donated by people who don't use them anymore or if they're broken or maybe they've upgraded to a new pair. We're willing to accept those hearing aids to the hearing aid bank program. We also have an equipment loan program. People can borrow equipment, anyone who's deaf, deaf, blind, or hard of hearing, or service providers who need to use the equipment temporarily. This equipment is good for someone if they're not sure whether or not they want to purchase something for themselves or get one through our free program, through the telephone program or if they want to just test equipment out before purchasing it. If their equipment is broken and they need to replace it, while they're waiting for their replacement, they can borrow equipment from us until they get their equipment back. It's a short-term loan program so that they don't have to buy something for just a short time. Maybe they're in the hospital and they need some kind of specialized phone, they can borrow that from us until the patient checks out of the hospital. And sometimes if they're borrowing it quite often from us, we'll encourage them to purchase one. But you can borrow this equipment for 90 days. We have telephones, we have personal assisted listening devices, good up for one-on-one -on -one or small group conversations. And the personal assisted listening device blocks out background noise which is a wonderful program, the equipment program is. We also have a media loan center. We have a library with a variety of books, DVDs that people can borrow for up to five weeks. Uh, we have material that talks about deaf culture, learning sign language, how to become a good interpreter or even how to become an interpreter. We also provide training and presentations for groups either people who are deaf or a hard of hearing group or a deaf blind group or the service providers. We can train on a variety of project products and programs. We can talk about what their legal rights are, maybe what their legal obligations are in providing services to this population. We talk about different federal and state laws and rules and we encourage them to become more empowered. One of our services is we help service providers who are looking for interpreters. We have an interpreter referral program. If a place is looking for an interpreter, they can contact us. We have a database of licensed interpreters, which is required in the state of Nebraska. An interpreter must be licensed in order to work for compensation in the state of Nebraska. Our advocacy services, we do a lot, especially our advocacy specialists, our education advocate, our interpreter program coordinator. We have a men mental health behavioral coordinator. We do a lot of advocacy on specific needs. So if you want to file a complaint, we can also help you with that. If you're not getting access to communication or access to receiving technology that you need, any auxiliary aids is what we call them, we can help with a lot of those types of things too. Your work is amazing. <laughs> well, thank you. Yes, I enjoy all of the different duties that we do have. Right, Cody? <laughs> yeah. So Cody, tell us a little bit about your behavioral health services. Yeah, sure. So we have a behavioral health referral program, sometimes a person who's deaf or hard of hearing or is faced with some frustrations in maybe a counselor that doesn't understand their culture or understand about a person being deaf or isolated. We have a lot of referrals on our website. We have experienced counselors with that are knowledgeable about deaf culture or sign language and that enables the person to get better services through counseling and sign language. We also do a lot of peer advocacy. Sometimes if it's not too much of a serious issue, 
we have experienced a lot of these issues ourselves, so we provide peer support for our, our colleagues as well. So, Cody, what advice would you have for a viewer who may be new to dealing with um, loss of hearing and may be a little bit overwhelmed? What should they do? Well, you know, it depends on the person's age. We are an informa information and referral agency. If we have a parent that has a deaf or a, a baby with hearing loss, we can send them to maybe parents who also are experiencing that. As Kim had mentioned, the education advocate, they help with schools and IEPs and things like that. We just have a variety of wonderful resources based on what it is you need and we adapt to our, our, ref our referral and our resources to that. Kim says, well, I'd like to add to our former director and also a current board member said, quote, hearing loss is not a loss of dignity. So we have a lot of technology that's available to us and we can function normally just like anyone else who can hear. Even at work, we st people are still able to do their duties. They just need to know what technology is available to make it work for them. And this is Cody. Today with technology, I mean, people are just, we're in 2019 and technology is growing every day and we provide a lot of information that people don't know, even know of. You know, Cody, we wouldn't even be here if it weren't for technology. And then we also want to thank our wonderful interpreter's voice for us today. So it, this is our demo room. It's good for people who are hard of hearing, deaf, deaf blind, who have never experienced using specialized telephone communication equipment. Some people already know what they need but they can fill out an application through our Nebraska Specialized Telecommunication Equipment Program, NSTEP for short. And what we do, our advocacy specialists work with people one-on-one -on -one, and they can test out phones to see what is most effective for them before they choose it. Once they pick one in the application, the application and the program, you can only apply and get a free telephone and a signaler every five years, once every five years. So it's important to choose the right one. We don't do any replacement and we're not responsible for any breakage. If the equipment needs to be repaired and it's under warranty, the company covers that. So these are some of the phones. For example, we have amplified phones. Those help for the person to hear the caller's voice. They can control the volume. Like for this model, for example, there's a volume control on the side, and then there's also a tone control. They can adjust the pitch of the caller's voice. Sometimes if someone has a low frequency hearing loss, they will have a, have a hard time understanding a male voice. So they can adjust the pitch so that they're able to understand the voice clearer and the clarity of speech is there for them. Sometimes an amplified phone doesn't work. They can hear a voice, but they're not understanding the words that are being spoken. So we recommend then a caption phone where they can read words on a screen similar to what we have here. Whatever the caller says, it goes through a caption telephone service. There's a captionist that listens to the voice and then they re-voice them through a software recognition program. And then those words show up on a screen. And it also amplifies the voice. So the user of the caption telephone, the person who cannot maybe understand words, they talk directly to the caller. So it's really nice, it's a nice option. Something else we have, this is um, an amplified cordless phone, but it connects to a smartphone. Sometimes a smartphone isn't loud enough, and so this device will amplify the smartphone. 
That, and smartphones are also recognized through the specialized program, through specific vendors, not all wireless service providers, just four. Sometimes if you have a hard time hearing the phone ringing, you're missing calls, you can also receive a signaler that will let you know when the phone's ringing. This is one example. This is a doorbell ringer that comes with the signaler in a kit. So just to give you an idea what that would look like. It can be visual with a light. It can also be tactile with a vibrating device that you can put under your bed between your mattress and your box springs and then it will shake the bed to alert you. Someone who's deaf blind can also wear it on their body to let them know when a phone is ringing or when someone's at the door. There was no sound. We had it set to just a light flashing, but it also has an audible noise that is very loud to uh, signal someone that, that someone's at the door or someone's at the phone. So those are all the equipment things that we provide through our Nebraska Specialized Telecommunications Equipment Program. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it is a wonderful program. So what is the best way to, for our viewers to learn more about your, about your organization or to contact you guys? And this Cody, I know there's, we've shared a lot of information today. If you're interested in NSTEP or any of the services that we provide, you can go to our website, ncdhh.nebraska.gov, or you can call us toll free at 800-545-6244. And we'd be happy to help you. Well, you guys do amazing work. Is there any, do you have any final thoughts? We look forward to hearing from you. We hope that you're not afraid to reach out and contact us. Anyone you know that is dealing with hearing loss or even yourself or you're maybe you're a service provider for this population, or you have a family member or a good friend, send them our way. We will be your resource to go to, and you will not regret it. Statewide, we're, we offer services statewide. Here is a Healthy Earth, Healthy You tip. Recycling is a great opportunity to help the environment. Here at Lincoln Public Schools, we've been recycling in all of our buildings since 2002. Uh, we have five recycling categories for collection, which includes cardboard, mixed office paper, newspaper and magazines, plastic and aluminum, and tin cans. We collect over 1.3 million pounds of material to be recycled and diverted from the landfill each school year. Recycling is a great opportunity for our students to be leaders in their classroom with that responsibility of collecting recyclable material. And this is definitely a recycling responsibility that they can take home with them as well for a chore at home. And recycling is a great opportunity with our children to instill that value of environmental stewardship at a young age. If you want to recycle at home, there's many opportunities to do this for free in a cost-effective way with the city's free recycling drop-off sites. Simple steps like recycling can make a big difference. Here is a Healthy Earth, Healthy You tip. Keep Lincoln and Lancaster County Beautiful works to organize our community to take action and clean up litter in your neighborhoods. Litter is not only unsightly, but it can have negative impacts on our community, such as decreased property value, increased crime, it's dangerous to our wildlife, and it pollutes the environment that we live and play in. You can be the difference. Take a bag and some gloves with you when you go for a walk to pick up stray litter in your neighborhood. If you would like to borrow a cleanup kit or apply for a litter grant, our program can help. Visit the website lincoln.ne.gov, keyword KLLCB, or call 402-441-8035. Simple steps make a big difference, and a healthier Earth means a healthier you. Here is a Healthy Earth, Healthy You tip. Composting is a great way to help the environment. Composting is the collection of organic materials, such as food scraps and yard waste, providing the conditions for that material to break down and turn into a nutrient-rich product which you can spread on your landscapes or gardens. Here at Lincoln Public Schools, we're composting or collecting the compost material in 29 of our school cafeterias to send off to a composting facility. 
This is a great opportunity for our students to learn about the decomposition process while at school. Composting at home is another opportunity for education out in the backyard. They can be active outside. And this is a great way for them to connect with food production and healthy foods if you can tie in your composting with a backyard garden. Composting is a great educational opportunity for children. It's a great way to get outside and be active. And it's another great way to save money by creating your own compost that you won't have to pay for. Simple steps like composting can make a big difference. A healthier earth is a healthier you. Lincoln Fire and Rescue and the Lincoln Police Department are committed to the safety and well-being of the citizens of Lincoln. We will continue to maintain our operations 24-7 with efficient response to your emergencies. My name is Jason Kruger and I am an emergency medicine physician at CHI Health St. Elizabeth and the medical director for Lincoln Fire and Rescue. I wanted to take this opportunity to explain our medical response operations during these unusual and confusing circumstances. The 911 Dispatch Center has implemented a series of questions when citizens call 911. When someone calls 911 for a medical emergency, the dispatcher will ask questions specific to COVID-19. If the patient answers yes to having a fever, cough, or trouble breathing, LFR and LPD emergency personnel will be advised by the dispatchers that a doorway triage is in effect. Doorway triage means that one provider will come to the door in personal protective equipment, PPE. This consists of a mask, gown, eye protection, and gloves. The patient will be asked to come outside, if able, move to the cot, and then into the ambulance for further treatment and evaluation. If the patient is unable to walk, two responders will go into the home to evaluate the patient in PPE. If the patient is critically ill, all members of the arriving medical team will respond inside in PPE to evaluate, treat, and transport the patient. Your first responders are committed to providing the same outstanding service to the citizens of Lincoln during this trying time. The reason we are implementing the doorway triage is for three reasons. One, to protect the citizens of Lincoln. Two, to protect our first responders and three, to conserve our limited supply of protective equipment. Together, as a community, we can continue to join forces as we all navigate through this difficult challenge. You can access the most current updates regarding COVID-19 by visiting lincoln.ne.gov and click on the red COVID-19 banner at the top of the page. Here is a Healthy Earth, Healthy You tip. Hi, I'm Sarah Knight with Bicycle Lincoln, a local advocacy organization that seeks to make Lincoln a better place to ride a bike. This Earth Day, we want you to consider biking as a very green way to get around and also a fun way that's great for you too. And there are some reasons that biking is pretty awesome. One of them is it's good for the environment, as you probably already know. If you choose to ride your bike instead of driving, you can, use, you can emit one-tenth of the CO2 that you would if you drove your car. Another good reason is that when you ride your bike, your fuel is your food instead of gas. I like to eat, so I think that's a pretty good reason, pretty good incentive. Uh, another reason, as you're saving fuel, you're also saving money. I save about $3 a day if I ride my bike, and that adds up big time over the course of the year, as much as $800. Another good reason to ride your bike is for exercise. You know, if you ride every day, you get your recommended 30 minutes of activity every day pretty easily with a commute. And then you don't have to go to the gym or do anything extra. Another good reason is reduced stress. Studies have found that active commuters are the happiest commuters. If you just get out, give it a go. You don't have to wear any special clothes. You can ride in just about whatever you're wearing. You just want a helmet and a working bike and you can get going. Check out the Bicycle Lincoln site. We have some tips for commuting. And the City of Lincoln also has a great website, ways to plan your route. They have trail maps and other great information. This Earth Day, give biking a try. It's great exercise, it's great for the environment, it's great for your pocketbook, and it's just plain fun. Simple steps like bicycling can make a big difference. A healthier Earth is a healthier you. When I am out walking my dog, I see vape products, wrappers, and cigarette butts, and it is really gross. 
This matters to me because when I'm walking my dog, I have to stop him from eating it. And I bet I'm not the only one that has animals that try to eat stuff like this, and that's really not okay. So in the end, smoking and vaping does not only hurt you, it hurts your animals and the environment. Do you really want that? I'm JJ Yost, I'm the planning construction manager for the Parks and Recreation Department and also a proud dog owner. Having a dog like Tucker, our yellow lab, is a great way to get some exercise. Um, the whole family likes to take him for walks. He's my running partner, really gets me up in the morning to make sure we go for those morning runs. He won't let me miss them. I get to enjoy the fresh air and it's a real mental break too, that, that opportunity to just be out there uh, outside, on, um, getting a little exercise, kind of clearing my mind, maybe thinking about what, what I need to do that day and, and also just that takes me away from the, the stresses of work and, and those kind of things. So there's an awful lot of benefits to being a dog owner. From the dog's standpoint, they get great exercise. When we humans take them out, they are just always happy to be Go with ahead. us. They love to play and again, play leads to exercise. So today we're at Rickman's Run, one of uh, Lincoln's favorite dog runs. We love to get out here with Tucker and it's a great place just to get out in the fresh air and walk and run. And We're fortunate that Lincoln's have four dog runs, really have one in all four quadrants of the city. And a great place to, again, to get out with your, with your furry friend. I encourage you to be creative, enjoy the time with them, and, and use it as both a physical and a mental exercise. Another great thing about being a runner and a dog owner in Lincoln is all the hundreds of plus miles of trails that we get to go around with Tucker and I on his leash. Hi, I'm Sheila with the Lincoln Yoga Center and I'm here just to share a few tips that you can use for your child to help bring them physical and emotional and mental balance and deal with all the stress that they have in their lives. There's a lot of pressure on our children today to be better and to keep up and to process a lot of information. And so hopefully we can give them some tools to make better choices and learn to deal with stress. Uh, the first one is breathing. So making sure that they're taking nice deep breaths, um, noticing that their abdomen is rising and falling so that they can stop and think. How we breathe affects how we feel, how we think, and how we react to what's going on around us. So when we hold our breath, we don't generally react in a positive way. And then some movements with our bodies. So our body sends us the most honest signals and information. So making sure that when they realize that they're starting to bring their shoulders towards their ears and make fists and hold their breath, that they can do some stretches and some movements for their body and learn how to diffuse some of that anger and frustration so that they don't react in harmful ways to themselves or others. And doing some journaling, so writing some things down of how they're feeling and coloring. And sometimes if they're coming at this from a place that's anger or frustration, just crumpling it up and throwing it away. So a way of getting rid of it and letting it go and moving on, making sure that they learn that it's okay to, to find ways to handle stress and let go of it. And some of our concentration and relaxation techniques include progressive muscle relaxation, so squeezing and then relaxing. Um, child's pose, coming down on the ground in um, rock or child's pose and just taking a few breaths so that we diffuse some of the anxiety and all the information that we're processing. So closing your eyes, finding a place that's quiet, just giving some time, um, five minutes, to take a break from all of that and talking it out. So finding someone that you can trust, that your child can trust to talk to, and giving them a place to just vent and let go of how they're feeling without judgment or without you trying to fix it. So just saying thank you for sharing and giving them that space to deal with how they're feeling about a situation. And sometimes just a hug, just touch. We're humans, we need touch um, to make us feel loved and cared for and that, that there's compassion in the world. And so um, giving your child a hug or even just holding a hand. And sometimes just putting hands on shoulders is a great way to ground a child if they're really upset about something. But there's a lot of chaos in our world today. So finding some of these tools to help navigate 
uh, the world that we live in and find ways to redirect because energy flows where awareness goes and making sure that you're putting energy into things that are going to affect you in a positive way rather than negative. And hopefully you can use some of these tools that we've shared today, you and your child, to help uh, manage our world and make it a kinder place for all of us. Thank you.